The next type of uh, excretory material, nitrogenous waste, which has to be eliminated is urea. We have discussed ammonotelism. So now we will talk about the second one that is ureotelism. Ureotelism term is given when the excretory material, the excretory nitrogenous waste is urea. So excretory nitrogenous waste is urea and that is why ureotelism and such organisms are known as ureotelic. When ammonia is getting excreted, the process is known as ammonotelism and the organisms which excrete ammonia are called ammonotelic. Here the process is known as ureotelism and the organisms are known as ureotelic. We'll write down the examples a little later. Now what is the advantage of excreting urea over ammonia? So let us talk about first how urea excretion is a better option for organisms which are terrestrial or which cannot afford to lose that much of water. So the advantage is that urea is less toxic as compared to ammonia. It is 1 lakh times less toxic than ammonia and that is why the organisms if they cannot eliminate or lose that much of water they can retain urea in the body because it is less toxic as compared to ammonia and not only just one two three times it is 1 lakh times less toxic than water or than ammonia. Second advantage is because it is less toxic, it can be stored in the body for a longer period of time. So can be stored in body for long period of time without causing any harm to the tissue without any harm or any ill effect on the tissues or structures where it is stored on the tissue. Third advantage is it requires less water for its elimination. If you are able to recall we said to eliminate 1 gram of ammonia about 300 to 500 milliliters of water is required. Whereas for elimination of elimination of one gram of urea requires only 50 milliliters of water. So as compared to 300 to 500 milliliters which is required in case of ammonia elimination, 50 milliliter is much less. So organisms which cannot afford to lose that much of water or the organisms which have become terrestrial and want to conserve water, they prefer losing the nitrogenous waste as urea instead of ammonia. Now, how is this urea synthesized? So synthesis of urea takes place in case of higher organisms like human beings in liver, in liver by a process or a cycle which is known as urea cycle or ornithin cycle. Urea cycle or ornithin cycle. We will be discussing this cycle later on in details but this is the place where urea is produced in case of human beings or higher organisms. There is one more example that is cartilaginous fishes. In cartilaginous fishes, urea is produced in all the tissues of the body except the brain kind of tissues. So if we write in cartilaginous fishes, urea production takes place 
in all tissues except brain. So these are some certain tissues where urea will not be produced. Otherwise, it is produced everywhere. So in case of higher organisms like human beings, urea production takes place in liver. The cycle is known as urea cycle or ornithine cycle. There is one more name given to this cycle. It is known as Krebs-Henslet cycle, na named after the scientist who actually explained this cycle. We will be talking about this in detail. And in cartilaginous fishes, this urea production takes place in all the tissues except the brain cells. So how is this urea actually produced? And as we have seen, the cells in case of higher organisms like man or humans, example, man, liver is the site where urea production takes place. But in case of cartilaginous fishes, the group which we call elasmobranchs, which includes sharks and rays, everywhere in the body, uh, urea production takes place, except uh, organs like brain and heart. So these are the places where it will not take place. Now, how exactly this is going to take place? Ammonia is made to react with carbon dioxide. And this gives us urea. Urea is written as NH2CONH2. So there are two ammonia molecules, one carbon dioxide, urea would be formed and water molecule would be given out. This process or this reaction is energy consuming. So here energy is required, but it is still a beneficial process in spite of spending energy because once ammonia, which is highly toxic, is converted into urea, we have seen the advantages. Urea is less toxic, much less toxic. It can be stored in the tissues or organs for a very long period of time. And the water which is required to eliminate one gram of urea is very, very less. So even after spending energy, the conversion of toxic substance into urea is a beneficial reaction or a process for organisms. The examples which we would be taking here. So in examples, we are talking of those animals which are ureotelic. Ureotelic organisms. In this, human beings are included. So humans, we can see mammals basically. Amongst mammals, even Aquatic mammals like whales, seals, they are also inclu included. So aquatic mammals like whale, seals, they are also included in this. Desert mammals or desert animals like camel, they are also included. Camels, kangaroo rats. And as we have written cartilaginous fishes, that means elasmobranchs. Elasmobranchs or cartilaginous fishes. And this includes electric rays, sharks. So basically sharks and rays. So these are the main organisms which are ureotelic. We will talk about dual excretion also along with this. We have seen that tadpoles, that is the larval stage of frog, they were ammonotelic because tadpole is aquatic and it can lose that much of water. As metamorphosis takes place in tadpole and it starts changing into the adult, it becomes ureotelic. So certain organisms show dual excretion. So let us take up those examples where we see dual excretion. We will continue with dual excretion. And why we are taking this dual excretion along with ureotelism is there are certain organisms which eliminate ammonia in certain conditions 
and if the conditions change, they become ureotic. Such kind of excretion is known as dual excretion. And this is totally dependent on the conditions. And we have seen what conditions are there when ammonia is to be excreted, water requirement is more, and in which condition urea would be eliminated. So the organisms which show dual excretion, that means they excrete ammonia also and urea also. We'll take a couple of examples. Say earthworm. Earthworms are ammonotelic when sufficient water is available. So they are ammono, ammonotelic. Condition is when sufficient water is there or water is in plenty. If water shortage is seen, then they become ureotelic. And this is where water is less. So again, it is condition dependent. If they can afford the, to eliminate that much of water, condition would be water should be available to eliminate that ammonia. So in that case, they would become or they would behave as ammonotelic. And if water is scarce, less, then they suddenly change the mode of excretion. That is, the material which is to be excreted out would become urea. Another example is of lungfish. Lungfishes and uh, African toad, that is xenopus. Xenopus, that is African toad. They are ammonotelic when they are in water. That means when they are leading aquatic mode of life, that, that time they are ammonotelic when aquatic. And they become ureotelic when they undergo hibernation in mud. So ureotelic during hibernation in mud. So when the water is less and the surrounding becomes muddy, that time they start excreting urea, uh, sorry, urea. But if they are aquatic, sufficient water is available, then they are acting as ammonotelic organisms. One more example is of crocodile. Crocodiles are most of the times in water, so they are able to eliminate uh, ammonia. But if they are kept out of water for a longer period of time, they start eliminating or excreting urea and even uric acid. So crocodiles, crocodiles eliminate ammonia when in water. That means most of the time they have this water available for them. And urea is excreted when they are kept out of water for long. So if they are kept outside, that is on land for a longer period of time, instead of ammonia, they would start excreting urea. That means these organisms, they are capable of eliminating ammonia also and urea also. Ammonia we have seen, it is produced by deamination of the amino acids. So if water is available, as soon as ammonia is formed, they will eliminate it with that 500 milliliter of water. But if water is less, they will convert this ammonia into a less toxic substance, urea, so that it can be stored in the body and can be eliminated with less quantity of water. So such type of excretion is called dual excretion because the nitrogenous waste which they are capable, capable of excreting are two, condition dependent. More water, ammonia, less water, they are ureotelic. So these are two types of waste which are eliminated and we have seen them in detail. That is ammonotelism and ureotelism. Now in the next segment, we'll talk about the third main type, 
that is uricoctalism where uric acid is eliminated plus we will also discuss one more type.